Greetings, one and all. Digital children, analog elders. Tis I, the Merton Fairy. And this episode, with a very good friend of mine, the Stream of the Little People. Now, I'm in West Penworth still. I'm sat next to this stream, which, if you go downstream, you get to the little town of Newlyn. And if you go upstream, you get to a place called Ding Dong, which is an old mine. And some of the tin from that mine, uh, they found in King Solomon's temple. So, so that's showing a clear link between the Middle East uh, and here, West Cornwall. And uh, yeah, it's also timely that I'm in Newlyn because uh, it's a full moon, it's a Scorpio full moon. And uh, I often think that Newlyn's got that kind of Scorpio energy. Uh, if you know anything a bit about the place, it's, uh, it's sort of the last remaining fishing port in, in the United Kingdom. And it's a very, how shall I say, old school attitude there of essentially fishermen who go out every day and maybe come back, maybe not, you know? So uh, yeah, kind of Scorpio attitude, if you like, is um, very strong in Newland. So we're down here, this is the stream of the little people. And um, like I say, the, the Knights Templar were here many, many uh, years ago and were involved in the trade of various items. Um, and I think one of the earliest things that Penzance was famous for was creating these double-headed axes uh, out of a local stone that came from Newlyn. Now the stone in Newlyn is called Blue Elvin and it is exceptionally hard. It's almost as hard as diamonds. And for a stone, you know, this was to be able to mine this or, or get at it in sizable amounts. This was extremely rare back in, you know, two, three, four thousand, five thousand years ago. And these these stone axes would have been highly prized by various uh, societies, cultures, and tribes around Europe. And also, it's interesting the shape of the double-headed axe is kind of similar to a toroidal field which is, uh, again, interesting in special relationship to now the sort of understanding in physics of the shape of the universe and such. And this stone, Blue Elven, uh, is, is unique to Cornwall and unique to particularly this part of Cornwall and it's mostly what Newlyn is made of. And there are reports that people, under the influence of you know, various hallucinogens, have had experiences where they believe they've met the Blue Elf or the Blue Elves, which I can well believe, you know what I mean? That makes a lot of sense. Um, also, another story about Newlyn, which I find uh, uh, interesting, whether there's any truth to it. Supposedly, as the Pilgrim Fathers were leaving the United Kingdom, um, they stopped off at Newlyn to get some water, and there's several springs in Newlyn, well, one of which is poisoned from the mining or it's not good water anyway. The story goes that the Pilgrim Fathers took their water before going to America from this spring and then essentially got ill on the way over to America and the rest is history. And I often, want, I mean, I don't know if there's any truth to this story, um, I, I certainly find the, the idea interesting um, that perhaps had they gone to the other spring in Newlyn, maybe the history as we know it may have been quite different with the, let's say, there being less animosity towards the indigenous people as, as they'd arrived. Maybe they would have been in better spirits. I don't know. Uh, and like I say, um, yeah, this connection with the elves, you've got going back to the Pixies, or the Piskies, as they're known around here, which has this connection with Pisces, which has a connection with Neptune, and Neptune, the energy source, or, or, or what appears in the sky as Neptune, wasn't discovered until about the 1700s by a Cornish guy, 
which is interesting because Cornwall's star sign is Pisces. So again, this sort of uh, loop to do with the Pixies, the Piskies, the Elves, you know. It's, uh, yeah, it's very much in the land around here, or in the water in this instance. Um, also, further down the stream here, you've had sightings of two baby panthers. Um, very clear, they were chasing a badger through someone's garden and the woman came out because she heard the badger sort of screaming, baby badger, and the badger was being pursued by two baby panthers, black panthers, green eyes, and they ran across her lawn, sort of lights lit up, and she saw very clearly two baby black panthers, so quite extensive wildlife around here. Um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, of course the connection with Neptune, you've got this, the... I suppose the power of illusions. It, it rules, some say, over the uh, you know the house of illusions. And Cornwall is no um, stranger to illusion, having itself been lost under water, as so the legends go, um, about a thousand years ago. And it was, they call it Leoness, but that was an old, that was a re relatively new name for an old land that essentially went out from beyond Cornwall, stretched out beyond the Isles of Scilly, possibly joined France and went on beyond the, uh, there. So this land is essentially now all underwater. The seas rose up and pretty much a lot of Cornwall is underwater. And the legend has it that there was one guy that left on a horse, on a white horse, he left this land and he was the only person to get out and the family who are called um, what are they called again they're from Campbell I don't know if they're called the Bassets or something but supposedly they've still got a white horse to this day in the stables ready for when Cornwall floods again and they'll have to you know, do one and get out of Cornwall so, uh, yeah that's pretty strange So yeah, and uh, there's plenty of uh, um, actual, I should say, evidence that there is land underwater between Cornwall, between France and the Isles of Scilly and beyond. One guy has done a study and he claims that he's found Atlantis somewhere between Cornwall and Ireland, or a similar to what Plato described, three concentric rings. I, I haven't seen much research of that, I've just read a little bit about it. So, um, yeah, that's also interesting. And, of course, um, tied in with Neptune, of course, we've got drugs. And, again, Cornwall is no stranger to uh, drugs. I'd say there is a very high percentage of drug use in Cornwall, higher than possibly the national average. And, certainly, there's more people in drug treatment and rehabilitation programmes here than anywhere else in the country. And Cornwall's also got the leading drug rehab centre in the country, a place called Bossin Farm, where they essentially give the addicts some land and let them work. Well, that's in Plymouth, yeah, and they've got another one down here, two, two centres. But essentially, they're getting people back to the land, and that seems to be having the best success rate with getting people, stopping them from uh, uh, what's it called, relapsing, going back on the drugs. So. Um, I think it's also interesting, I, I used to live in another woods further up from here, and um, I had an experience one night, I was in a tree house and I was looking up through the trees and it was like the image all became reversed. Instead of the leaves being in front of me and the sky being behind, it kind of switched. And I could feel all these people looking at me or, you know, and again, I don't think there were people. I felt, I felt there were divic energies. Um, again, going back to pixies, something like that. But I could feel they were, they were studying us, studying me. And I suddenly, I don't know, I'd flipped and, and I'd gone to their perspective. And it was just very interesting. Again, time with what Neo Glimmer says. Big up, Neo Glimmer. Um, that uh, we are here being studied. You know, and I, I, I got the very clear sensation that that's exactly what's going on. You know? 
And again, interesting that this is the Bluebell Woods. Uh, they say that also there is, uh, this is a sign of the little people's presence. They like things like that, Bluebell Woods. And again, another someone else's experience further down this stream where there's three bridges as you get into Newlyn and some houses either side, very old bridges, very old, like I say, very old Newlyn, older than Penzance. They had a very strange experience where there were these crystalline beings walking around the house. Um, two people witnessed it. Uh, and I mean, it, it, it had a very, how should we say, profound experience on both those people. I mean, one of the guys, unfortunately, um, had somewhat of a breakdown after that. Uh, you know, and, but this is simply, and this is the stories I've heard of what he witnessed. And I don't know what they are. That again, it sounds very arconic. And I don't know. I wonder if there's again between. I don't know. I speculate in between uh, the relationship between the Piskies and the Archons, if you want to call it that. How does that, you know, um, how, how does how does that dynamic work? I don't know. Very, uh, very interesting. Very unusual. So yeah, just thought I'd um, update you on that. The stream of the little people, Ding Dong, the Knights, Te and also the Knights Templar were carving stone uh, and getting some very strange how shall I say, effects from it, including levitation and teleportation. So anyway, some more on that next time. And you never know what you'll find when you're uh, down here by Newlyn. Look, here she is, Excalibur. All right, one love. Peace and love, you all. And um, yeah, just some random stories uh, over here in Cornwall, all right? And, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to the Blood Over Intent uh, social media site. That that's, sounds really interesting. We're really, yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, big up all the guys uh, and girls who are behind that. All right, um, yeah, peace and love. Stay tuned for more uh, crazy stories from the uh, Avalon. All right, adios, peace and love.